Today on the Skid Factory, we're turbocharging this 1978 Komatsu forklift. First I thought turboing the forklift would have been a stupid waste of time, but it actually turned out to be pretty easy. I'm pretty happy with the results actually. The reason we got the big girl in here other than turboing it is because we had a pallet of uh, stuff from Dobinson's, um, side steps and a bull bar. Uh, we needed to get the bull bar so we can move on to, to um, fitting the intercooler, which um, we've had the core here for a while, but we need the bar to make sure everything fits. What I've got is a 850 by 220 by 70 mil core, and we're going to actually put our own tanks on it. This came, where did this come from? Golby's, wasn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, supplied by Golby's. Um, we, I, I come up with this idea because, um, not so much in a Cummins, but in a TD42 powered car, which where they're prone to overheating, and um, you need to be careful of of airflow problems um, blocking the airflow to the radiator, putting a normal intercooler like a 600 by 300 in there, you end up with a lot of tank blocking the airflow. So my idea with this was to make a get a core that was actually as wide as the, the entrance to the car, which is the 850. And um, it's actually pretty much the same area of as a 600 by 300 by 76 generic intercooler. So it's gonna have the same cooling effect but it's not going to um, impede the airflow through the radiator. So we'll see how it goes. Um, we need to make tanks, of course, so normally you just fold up something and weld it together, but when you, one of your good mates is a pattern maker, you get cast ones instead. So Pretty schnazzy. It took five days from Denny putting a tape across the intercool and measuring it to delivering these to me, which is pretty special. Um, they're straight out of the um, mold. As you can see, it's got the fin all over it still. It hasn't been dressed at all. So we've got to dress them up, um, grind them off, get rid of any of the sand that's still in there, stuck to it, and um, then we'll weld them onto the core. What a legend day, how good's that? Mm. It's good to have mates with specific skills. Clean these up. Is that where we're up to? We're just going to jump into fitting it? Yeah, we'll just um, clean these up and weld them on. All right. And then mount it. Cool. Zip ties? Uh, maybe just put some, jam some rags in there. You think we should put a guard over this? Get one of those like, Achtung, hot. Achtung. Yeah. Rotating parts and a picture of a hand getting squashed and broken in half. <laughs> Start it up. Although it only took Danny five days to make these tanks, don't be fooled. It's a simple item, yet there's still countless hours spent designing patterns. 
If you'd like to know more about how it's done, then check out our video where we made some cast iron manifolds for Danny's twin turbo EZ30 Subaru. We just taped the end tanks on for the moment. We're just sort of fiddling around, trying to figure out what the best way to go about this is. Uh, the tanks are 2.5 inch outlets, so it's, it's more or less designed in theory in my head for, you know, like TD42s and stuff like that, that um, where the airflow issue is an issue. Um, but we're not, we're not gonna use slip-ons. We're gonna use um, Wiggins style clamps, Raceworks. Um, and also I'll probably go three inch on this side because unlike most of the time on a patrol, there's an airbox here that is a real pain to get past, but um, that's all been swapped up side to side and that. So we've got space there. So I'll probably just run with a three inch uh, on the cold side and two and a half on the hot side, which is pretty standard. So I'll, I think on this side, I'll weld this clamp directly to the tank, like cut off the 2.5 inch bit. And on the other side, we'll probably go with a, a 90 degree bend and then have the coupler facing upwards that way, just because. I um, just need a bit more of a, I need a long angle here because we've got a, an obstacle in the way here in the way of the um, receiver drive for the air conditioning, which used to be on that side. But on this side, there's no obstacle, and we also are pretty tight here because of the radiator and this. I was say, hang on, no obstacle, but you just got to dodge the washer bottle. Well, normally, you, normally you've got to dodge that as well. So moving stuff around's actually worked out pretty well for us because that's actually a bit of a pain. You've got to sort of pull it right up high to go underneath it and stretch all the pipes around and stuff like that. So uh, it's working out okay. Does this engine need three inch for the car? I don't think side? so. But the 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 original fitting that was on there had a three inch inlet on it but it was the most horrific thing on the inside that it, it shrunk down to probably two inches if that just so they could put bolts through so what looks like it flows well doesn't always so uh, this uh, this will be more than enough i'm going to address one thing also which i know you, you already don't care what about a winch dude where's the winch going no, you just have to put it move it forward if you use one okay get a compact one um it will go back a bit further than that i've got to cut a little notch out of here push it back further but basically anytime you put a front mount intercooler on they do get in the way of the winch so there's nothing easy about true that putting front mounts on these and oftentimes that's why they people stick with the top mount with holes like big bonnet scoops and stuff like that but that's obviously not possible in this in this scenario because uh big engine so I might tack a few bits and pieces together and move on with the mock-up process and see where we end up. Is that even a word? Intradasting. Yeah. I think it's an internet word, yeah.
intercooler is being mounted by some 3mm aluminium angle which is cut to size and bolted to the radiator support. Some 6mm nut certs hold the top brackets in place and are welded to the tanks. Why didn't you let me weld it? Because you've got a history of being bad at welding patrol intercoolers. Like the Duramax. Yeah. <laughs> It appears we've reached the end of its service life. Most of the time, when you're fitting a front mounted intercooler, you'll need to cut the body to make way for the pipes. In this case, we went half spec and cut them way bigger than they needed to be. kind of banking on this pipe actually coming out after we've tacked it in there so we'll see how we go might have to pull the engine out to get the pipe out Great success. that's the easy side done let's do the hard side take that compressor off and cut the thing off without messing it up all right. Here's one I semi-prepared earlier. That don't fit. Rule in a second. I'm gonna finish welding that later. Right now, I smell deliveries. What are they, 35s? No, no, they're 33s, but I keep them clean. <laughs> Should you bolt these on and then we can end the episode? But that, that might work, yeah, let's do that. Do it. Oh, that sounds 
It's a big rig. You're standing pretty tall. Two inch lift. Yeah, dog. Two inch and 33s for the win. So we made some reasonable progress. Intercooler made, I suppose. The, we just bought a core from Golby's, so um, you can't actually sort of specify what size you want. And um, sometimes it's not exactly what you want because they've got limitations with stacking everything, but uh, you can get pretty close. So I just told them what size would be ideal and I ended up with something pretty close. So um, normally you'd probably just make some fabricated tanks, but we've got a good mate that's a pattern maker, so we cast our own. Uh, this side was pretty easy to do, actually. There's, uh, it all sort of fits quite well because we've got no air box here, so that's normally a real pain trying to get air boxes and pipes and stuff through. So three inch, it's got Raceworks um, Wiggins clamps or Wiggins style. Pretty good, actually. They've got that sort of a, a variation on a theme to do the bolts up and stuff like that fit quite well. Um, the other side was a bit more difficult, so we got obviously that huge airbox in the way and plus the, the alternator and the aircon compressor was give us some um, sort of limited room. So um, on that side we've actually bracketed the tubing to the alternator because um, even though these things, I don't know, if it, they appear to be sort of like a V-band clamp but they're not, they do have a lot of movement in them. They, um, they're designed to be able to move in and out and articulate a little bit so what happens is if you don't bracket them and you've got a tight space it can whack back and forward and hit things so it probably would have hit the alternator if we didn't put a bracket on it. We did sort of try and um, get away without the bracket because it does make it easier to get things in and out but um, it was required so we've done that. I just got a couple of little welds to do on that and on the compressor cover and that stuff's all done so then we're going to move on to the next job. We've got a bit of space left here. We're sort of conscious to leave gaps so we can add things like um, we've got to put a catch can in for the breather. Um, we probably we need to do a brake vacuum canister as well, which originally sat around here somewhere, but it was missing on this car because it had gas. So they sacrificed brake vacuum for a um, terrible gas system. But, um, we'll find another one and replace that. We've pretty much nailed down the cooling system. Got everything ready to go for that, so that's good. I think we're probably gonna have to move on to fuel soon, as soon as I get uh, my pump and filter arrangement. I'm just waiting on that to arrive, so that's about all we got for this week. Didn't shout out Jake for the tyres. Oh yeah, we got some 33s, sort of good quality. I think they're like, they're like halfway between an all-terrain and a mud, so they don't howl when you're driving down the highway too much. They were supplied by um, our mate Jake from Patio Shays, which is in Noosa. Uh, probably no use to anyone unless they live on the Sunshine Coast, but uh, thanks Jake for hooking us up. It was good. I even delivered them because I would have had to make five, five trips in my car to get the things home. So... Hey, we walk the challenge, mate. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's too much. There's not enough space because of all the undies. Yeah. Um, one last thing which I've got to remind you about is the merchandise. Is that pre-order still running or what? Yeah, I don't know if it's still going to be running. Uh, we've got pre-orders up, so get on that if you're interested in a fancy shirt, a going out shirt. What he wears them to it's the just, clubs. No, it's just a workshop shirt. Yeah, it's a fancy workshop shirt. Okay. It's I'm not, like a dad, it's not like gonna a, wear one of them in a workshop. It's you're... like a dad like barbecue shirt. Yeah. For sure. Like your favourite Bathurst tea. Yep, that's the one. Yeah. Get onto it if you're keen. Thanks for watching. We're getting there. We'll be back next week and do some more work. Cheers. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, 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 yo. Right? You know how we talk about Nissan brackets and how they have a lot of them, they don't need them? This is a classic example.
Why though? Something that he wants me to say. He's trying to use mind games. I think my microphone's broke on this side. Yeah, it is. My bad. Are we back? There we go. I'm back now. Sorry. Oh, I was so peaceful without you. No. <laughs> Before we finish today, I just wanted to talk about something that is um, close to my heart and um, that's been sadly reminded to us this week. Uh, we've recently lost a friend who. Um, worked at the local parts store and we all enjoyed the company of. Um, so I wanted to put it out there for you guys um, to really think about looking after your mental health. Uh, talk to your friends, talk to medical professionals and um, sort of keep an eye on how you're feeling because this is not going to go away unless people talk about it and sort of acknowledge if they've got a problem. It's not, as they say, it's not weak to speak. If, you've got, if you're feeling down and you, you feel like you're out of control, then talk to your mates, talk to your parents, talk to your wife, talk to your girlfriend. Just talk about it. Get some professional help. There's plenty of services out there to help people out. You just need to go looking for it. Uh, it can be a very, very difficult time and having um, mental health problems does make it harder for you to go search for, for um, help. Um, I've suffered from mental health problems for 25 years and it, uh, it is a difficult thing to um, get through it so you can get help. So please talk about it. Please. And for people that aren't luckily enough to not suffer from mental health issues, please understand that just because you have never felt it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Be caring, help people out, talk about it, help them get help so we don't have to go through this as much. It's a um, terrible waste of life and it um, needs to be addressed. So look after yourself guys and look after your mates. Thanks for watching.